Hey guys, welcome back to my shop. I got another episode for you guys today and uh, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. We're not going to be working on the Mercedes today or the Ferrari as much as I'd like to be. Remember, I, I named this channel Exotic Car DIY because I wanted to show people that you could work on anything, including an exotic by yourself. And uh, But in, the truth is, I work on everything and I'm pretty much in the shop all the time, either doing my cars or my friends' cars. And uh, this channel is going to be more about that. It's going to be everything I do. Uh, so I've been busy. I do work six days a week. And so it's kind of hard to keep up on all this stuff. Uh, we had a hurricane here like last month and I just haven't put out a video. The Blazer, I, I got to keep telling myself, it's 35 years old. It's been through a bunch of owners and they all had different plans for the truck. And uh, I'm not knocking any of them, but I wanted to get it up to what I call Kenny spec, I guess. And uh, so on the outside, it's 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 pretty close to where I want right now. Uh, but I'm still trying to address the drivetrain. Um, right now, it's uh, sweating from all its 135 horsepower or whatever. <laughs> anyway, it leaks a lot. And so the oil pan is smashed in either from a rock or somebody jacked it up there. And also the transmission's leaking. So I'm going to get that taken care of as well as fix like the turbo drain line because it's done kind of really ghetto and it's gonna it's gonna pop and leak sometime so let's get on um, that on the lift all right we're uh up in the air even though this lift is strong and i'm confident where i put the pucks it's just always weird to have this big thing hanging over your head okay so this is what we're doing dented oil pan all jacked up it also looks like it's leaking here up front and you can see the turbo drain line is leaking and looks like it's about to pop with that heater hose leaking transmission a lot of just random uh you know transmission lines are kind of all kind of a little bit ghetto on this and uh just trying to clean everything up because i mean otherwise this truck is a super clean truck with like no rot or rust anywhere uh, so we got a new transmission pan a new set of gaskets and so now it's time to get started One other thing I like to do when I have the pan off, uh, especially on a motor that uh, I'm not, don't know the history of. I knew this one was rebuilt, but I didn't know, uh, you know, what kind of job was done. Anyway, popped off a uh, rod uh, cap and uh, bearings look great. Even still have most of the coating on them. Rod looks perfectly clean, no scratches. You can look up in here and you actually see the cam up there. I, I, I inspected each one and uh, they look really good. And uh, then you can also see parts of the cylinders on some of these. Probably not with the phone, but you know, they uh, still have their cross hatching. Look like they were freshly honed. A uh, little bit of rust at the bottom, but the piston doesn't go there. And so I'm not really concerned about that. So looks like we're in really good shape. So the first step is going to be removing this mechanical fuel pump that's not used. And inevitably, there's always one bolt in the project that takes longer than the entire project. No. Nope. No combination of tools or wrenches seems to work on it. There's just no access, so it took forever. Nope. I have no idea how this is working, but it's working. This is the longest bolt. It's just above finger tip. It's crap. Okay, time to finish up the blazer. So uh, we got the mechanical fuel pump off. That was a royal pain to get that off, but it's it's unused, so it's off. And we're going to replace it just with uh, just the standard small block Chevy fuel pump cover. Uh, and then to replace the cheesy heater hose that they had going to the pan, we have some uh, 500 degree braided steel line and then uh, an AN10 fitting with a uh, through pan bolt that we're going to go into the uh, oil pan. So I was going to try to get one of the returns that drops the oil through this thing, but because of the turbo placement and the exhaust manifold right next to it, it was just too close of a turn and the only way to do it was to go down and then back up and since it's a gravity draining turbo that wouldn't have worked so i'm going to go ahead and put these on there and i'll show you when it's done so we got this nice little through fitting bulkhead uh a and 10 fitting that i'm going to 
install here. So we looked, and the motor mount's here. Uh, we need to kind of make the tube down. So we're gonna go for like right about here. And that should be above the oil line, but below. Kind of put this cardboard box here to catch most of the shards. So I don't have to like really work hard to clean them out. Perfect. All right. Now we're just gonna clean that up. And we got it really nice and cleaned up. This thing came with some uh, rubber seals. There we go. Okay, so now we can see that we have uh, the fitting installed. I did test spin the motor just to make sure there's enough clearance between it and the rod, and there's plenty. Uh, so yeah, now we just need to test fit them on there, cut them to length. So our trial's done, it's installed. I haven't cranked it down yet, but as you can see, that is uh, straight. If we would have gone up to the plate up there, it would have, even if I shortened this pipe, it would have had to go uphill no matter what, just because of the, the angle of the bank. But I'm comfortable with the radius and uh, I like the positioning. So this is good to go. So we got the old pan over here and this pan is so dented in that that's the maximum amount of oil that drains out. So it leaves, that's gotta be two quarts in there. Anyway, so the new pan, just to make sure that this uh, oil pump didn't get damaged at all. I wrapped it in saran wrap. We're gonna put some Play-Doh on there, install it and just uh, check it to make sure it's in the right place. And I'm actually glad you, I checked. That's about an inch and a half above the bottom of the pan. So I've lowered it. All right, so following the instructions, you install the rear piece first. That's what we just did here with RTV. You gotta make sure that it fits into these little notches here and here. And according to the Felt Pro instructions, it does say use RTV everywhere. So we're gonna go ahead and... There are many different methods to put an oil pan gasket on. And there's no shortage of arguments of people saying to do it one way or the other. Uh, some people install the entire thing dry. Some people use RTV everywhere. Some people just use RTV. Some people just put it in the corners. On this one, the instructions actually said put it everywhere. And so I put it everywhere. I like to, to, I don't go crazy with it because it gets squished. And so as long as you had an adequate coverage that didn't dry when you're putting it on, you're, you're good. I like to let it set up for like an hour and then torque it down. And, um, so what I'm doing is just trying to get all of them at an even setting of like uh, before I torque it down. So I'm just going to torque them all to like literally 20 inch pounds and then come back and actually do it to spec. All right, so do the transmission. It actually looks like I'm leaking from that, the pan. And uh, I hate this. I don't know why they do this. They don't even put a drain plug on there. So the only way to get the fluid out is to take the pan off and spill it everywhere. So um, whatever, got to do what we got to do, I guess. drain on there. I mean, nobody has a drip pan that's that big. Alright, so now we've got the drain pan off. We've taken a nice shower and transmission fluid. I guess they never really planned on you changing the fluid because it's a 700 R4 and they probably don't last long enough to uh, need the fluid change. You just replace the whole transmission. Anyway, uh, we got that off. We're gonna try to replace the seal on the selector uh, shaft right there and then uh, try to get it buttoned back up with a new filter as well. Alexa, what is 12 times 15? 12 times 15 is 180. For the uh, selector seal, you have to use a special tool. At least it makes it a lot easier. You just tap it in. And then uh, thread this little bolt in there and it pops right out. Easy.
Okay, so we're pretty much done for today. Uh, I gotta keep reminding myself because I get frustrated that this this car is 35 years old now, and um, so it's had a lot of owners. And uh, you know, I'm not knocking on any of them. They had their own priorities. Some of them just wanted to offer this thing. My goal is to kind of just make this in a, a a blazer that I can have for a long time. So I want to get it to my standard and sometimes that's a little higher so cosmetically I've got it where I want now I'm working on just the mechanics and so I think long term I have a Duramax plan for this I've been searching for a nice LBZ probably have to go to an LB7 something like that to put in there but for now I'm gonna get this 6.2 in prime condition so yeah today we did the transmission pan uh, the transmission gasket we did the input shaft uh, or selector shaft um, seal and then we put a new oil pan on it that's not smashed in set the uh, the correct depth on the oil pump uh, intake and uh, we went and checked some rods while we were there a rod bearings the bearings look perfect in this thing and then of course we redid the turbo drain next thing up i think i want to redo all the lines so uh, i'll show you if you look here it's still got the steel lines now the steel lines i guess get moved when you put the turbo because these are supposed to go above this bar but because of the crossover they popped them down I just put some uh, standoffs and zip tied them out of the way, but these need to be addressed. I think I'll make some nice, just braided stainless lines all the way back and uh, run them up, tucked up nicely so you can't get in the way.